Welcome back to another episode of Expat Hoops, where we're actually breaking down the 2022 international prospects in the NBA draft. We're joined again by Shane Lawal, uh, played with Team Nigeria, 10-year career, including stints in the EuroLeague. That's going to be something that we're going to circle back to because this next prospect, he's actually going to make a comparison to that guy, uh, one of his former teammates at Barcelona. But Shane, if you haven't checked him out before or seen the episodes, we have past episodes with him, not only where we've talked about his career, but breaking down another prospect. And we'll be continuing to break, break down some of these prospects with him. Today, we've got Nikola Jovic. He's an intriguing prospect. He's considered to be a top 25, probably pretty easy prospect. Uh, yeah. Some of the mock drafts that we have him at that we've seen are somewhere around the 17, 18, 19 range. And of course, as we're recording in early June, that could all change by the end of the month. But one thing's for sure, this is a guy that you are going to see a lot of in the future. Shane, welcome back. We look forward to breaking down Nikola Jovic with you. What's up, Andy? So as we're sitting here, we have exchanged a lot of text back and forth about Jovic. Uh, there's a lot that you like in him. Tell us first what you like in him before we get to the negatives. Um, he, he's He's got a chance to be an explosive player because he's a great shooter. He's a good shooter off the dribble. He's a good shooter off the catch, like a Reggie Miller type of good shooter off the catch, running off screens, catching it. He gets his feet set really quickly. So he doesn't need a long, he doesn't need a lot of long space. I can compare him a little bit to Duncan Robinson on that, where you know, he'll run you off screens, catch and set, you know, jumps quickly, you know, elevation to a shot, you know, and he could be a really good shooter. Um He's got some uh, shot blocking ability for his position. You know, I saw him block a left, you know, with his left hand go up and block a shot. He's got a quick rip through, which is an underrated thing. And uh, when you're for a wing, when you're playing with other point guards, you're not going to get too many chances to touch the ball. You know, a lot of NBA basketball is one on one, one on one, break down and create. So when you're standing and watching, or you're standing and watching, or you're moving around and watching, once that, once the, the, the main player, you know, your Bron and your Dirks and your who have yous break you down and they swing that ball over to you. You have half a second to be a great basketball player, whether it's catching and shooting, catching and making an extra pass, you know, catching and driving. You only have half a second to do that, you know, and one thing this kid does, this player does really well is he's got a quick rip through, rips through really quickly, will drive right, mostly will drive right but he's dunking on you off one foot, you know, like he's, he's, he's also very comfortable in the mid range, you know, in the, in the mid post area, he can post up smaller, smaller guards, but man, I'm talking about he's on the wing, you swing it, catch it, rip through one dribble, bang, you know, and that's, um, it reminds me a lot of Thomas, uh, to, uh, Tomas Satoransky, Sato, you know, uh, my teammate in Barcelona, he just, that's the first thing that jumped out the page to me was that's a taller Sato. Yep, yep, that's exactly in our conversation. You were just that was one of the taller Sato. Yep, like he 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 doesn't look six ten. I would say, I don't know. I think he's six ten is not accurate, but you know, don't come for me if he actually is six ten. I'll say he's about six, maybe six eight and some change. This Close. is where the nerd research helps. Uh, in the draft combine in shoes, he's actually measured at six eleven with a seven foot wingspan. In shoes, yeah. Okay, so possible like six nine, maybe he's like six nine. Shoes can give you almost two inches depending on what shoes it is. So okay, I, I you know, close enough. I mean, when you watch him on 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 a camera, he doesn't, and I know camera can lie, but he doesn't look like he's towering. But you know, he's also on the wing, so he can lie a little bit. Well, but, and we're talking about camera could lie. Remember when we first started talking about him a couple of weeks ago when we were having an eye towards this? One of the things that I said initially was he doesn't look all that quick and then i kept on watching the video and when you also were challenging me on that one of the things that i kind of brought up were some of the athletes that are tall that they don't look that quick but whether it's football or basketball all of a sudden they're gone and yeah. it didn't look like they beat you and when you challenged me on that i went back and watched the video and i agree with you i think he's deceptively quick yeah like i said wait he's not that quick i said well, maybe i'm hey, i gotta do one of these because you know the first thing that i thought of was Sadoransky. And Sadoransky is super athletic, you know, <laughs> Sado's super athletic, you know, and, you know, he's, um, he plays fast, 
you know, it comes from that Serbian, that Serbian upbringing of basketball, where it's the ball never stops. The player never stops. Everything is on offense. Everything is full speed, full throttle. Even in the half court, you're moving, you're constantly moving, coming on screens. And he's definitely got that high Serbian IQ. That's one thing I'm going to give every Serbian guy I played with was they had to understand offense. So, you know, flare screens, down screens is really understanding how to play off the ball, how to play on the ball, how to find an open person, how to, you know, get little quick advantages, you know, um, he'll do a good job of running you off screens and things like that, you know, but um, he can play, he can play in a control pace. You know, he can, when it's one-on-one -on -one time, he can play, he can play you with a control pace where he's not rushing his dribble, you know, going slow to fast, fast to slow. You know, um, I like him, man. I like him. I think um, some of his, some of the things that I wasn't too keen on was that he doesn't like that left hand. You know, he's not comfortable going left. He doesn't really, um, he'll, he'll try to, he's, he'll try to use his left, but he's not comfortable with his left hand yet. But that's something that, I can see him get better at if if um, somebody challenges him to get better at that. I can see him improving at that. He hasn't had to use that yet. You know, he was, you know, playing in a, a FIBA and playing in um, playing in the pros. Excuse me, playing in FIBA and playing the pros. He's kind of been able to get away with it so far. You know, as far as playing basketball, um, his height can might get him in trouble because. He's at a weird place where he's a guard, but he can't really guard smaller guards. He can't guard shifty guys. And you why know? is that? It just, I don't know. It's just, it's every long person, they're not really good with the pitter patter, pitter patter. It's funny. I was working on it with my kids today. I have this, I have this unicorn, uh, Anaya Hardy. Anaya, I'm giving you a free plug. But Anaya <laughs> Hardy, she's 6'3, which is probably about, 6'10, 6'9, 6'10, and, 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 and man's, you know, and she's super athletic, super fast. And but she's got big feet and she's she's got cement feet right now, where it's like the feet stay stuck to the ground. So even when we're trying to do quick feet drills, she doesn't she doesn't pick it back off the ground, she slides it on the ground. It's like, no, you have to get in the habit of trying to get your feet off the ground, put it back on the ground quickly. That's that's where you build quickness. Speed is, but quickness is boom, 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 boom. So just trying to challenge her to when we're when we're working on you know stationary defense and just guarding the pivot, trying to get her when she's guarding the pivot to not just slide her feet to pick her feet off the ground and put it back down and pick it up again, put it back down instead of having cement feet. And that's kind of what happens to a lot of taller guys is we get cement feet. You know, not me, but a lot of taller guys that get cement feet. Because it's just easier for us to not have to pick it up. The less we pick it up, the less tired we'll be. Quicker, a smaller person, it's easier for them to pick up their feet, put it back down, pick it up, pick it, put it back down. So that's one place where he struggles. Now he's good with a straight line drive. He's he's really good with a straight line drive. He'll he'll if you drive him straight, he'll be there at the finish line to block it on the glass or to contest the shot and whatnot. But if you go one dribble crossover, stop, boom, boom. That's not, he's not comfortable there. And his technique isn't good. So he crosses his feet, you know, he'll flip open, different things like that. So he's he's going to be a guy where now, if he's in the league, can he guard a three? Because even though a lot of the threes in the NBA are now 6'8", six, 6'9", six, 6'10", six, they're quicker, right? So can he guard a three, you know, or can he at least sustain a three point, the, the three position? He can't guard a four or a five. He's barbecue chicken as far as um, physicality. So, you know, he can't guard Anthony Davis. You know, granted, that's the top of it, but he can't guard Zion. You know, he can't guard, he can't guard Embiid, even though nobody can guard Embiid, but he can't, he would struggle with DeAndre Ayton. You know what I'm saying? So he would struggle with guys who got 50, 60, 70, 80 pounds on him, you know, and but he will also struggle with a guard or one or two he'll be fine with with most of the threes in the nba but any of those elite threes might struggle with them but you know he's a rookie too that's something he can kind of grow into because he looks like he's got a great work ethic you can see how he plays he plays with an extreme motor that's a sign of great work ethic so you know his his um 
to guard a two or a two is, you know, a score, an intense score, got to be quick on your feet, got to be light on your feet. And I don't think he's fully comfortable on that island yet, you know, but. Um, and there's a key point, though. You say yet. And one of the last breakdowns that we did, we talked about whether somebody would develop something or not. Yeah. So in terms of looking ahead, especially a young prospect like this, that he's 18 as we're recording this in the next few days by the draft, he'll actually officially turn 19. He's somebody, though, that you can see that can grow into that, though, right? Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum wasn't a good on-ball defender when he first got into the NBA. Well, I mean, he didn't, he didn't. He doesn't stick out of my head as being a good on-ball defender when he got to the NBA. He is now. You know, and he, he's a very he's an elite help side defender now. So he can grow into it. And maybe, maybe he was when he was a rookie. I don't remember, honestly. You know, he just doesn't stick out in my head as somebody that was out there getting stops on, on the ball. So he can definitely grow into it because he's got the build. He's long, he's fast, and he's got the motor. So if he just gets a little bit of technique and know-how to his feet, he can really be a good on-ball on defender. He'd probably be able to guard one through three, you know. And also, um, you get the NBA's, they teach a lot of good defense there. The biggest difference between him and Kai Soto, Soto when I said, well, I don't know if he can pick that up, is, you know, they don't move the same, you know, be, you know, it's a, what's the name can move. Jovich can really, really, really move for, for, for a six ten guy. Right. He can really move. Like I'm talking about, he can fly up and down the court. I'm a big fan of his motor, you know, and then, and then he's, and then at that, at the three position, he sees the floor. Well, he's a good passer. Very he's good. Good. Pass. I mean, that's a Serbian thing too. Like you're not going to find too many Serbians that aren't good passers, you know, and, um, so I mean that's yeah I, I think he can improve as a, I think he can improve as an on-ball defender. Hello and thanks for watching. Be sure to give the video a like, and you can watch more videos over here. Uh, you can also click subscribe over here so you're notified when we have new content here on Expat Hoops.